Hi, my name is Adam Schuster from Ascent Home Theatre Systems and in this video I'm going to talk to you about video cables. Now video cables can be split into two groups, analog and digital. I'm going to start with analog from the lowest bandwidth to the highest quality. Now let's start with this one. This is the composite cable. One single yellow plug, these other two are actually audio. What this does is takes the three channels RGB compresses them into one signal and sends it down one low quality, low bandwidth cable. Lowest quality, avoid wherever possible. The next one up from there is S-Video. That's one of these things. It's round, it's old, you're very rarely going to come across one of these. Some of the older cathode ray style TVs used to use these. The only advantage this has over composite is the fact that each channel is sent down its own wire and comes out on its own pin. Still very low bandwidth. DVD quality at best. Now moving on from there we have the component cable. Now this sends each of the component channels as the name suggests down its own wire that is R, G and B. Now this will give you a full 1080 signal which is excellent quality. These are still used a lot in home theatre system setups because it avoids digital handshake issues and protocol issues and it means that you can send a high quality image over a fairly significant distance which is a challenge with HDMI. Now moving on to digital cables. The first digital cable I'm going to show you is the VGA cable. Now some of you may recognize this as a monitor cable. You are 100% correct. That is exactly what it is. It will send you a 1080 signal but it won't do 3D and it certainly doesn't do audio. Moving on from there we have DVI. Now you may notice it actually kind of looks similar to VGA and in many respects, it has replaced VGA. It is a little bit bigger, will give you 1080 signal and actually higher quality if you require it, and will do 3D quality, but it will not do audio. The last cable we're going to look at is HDMI. I'm sure you've seen one of these. This is the standard, I guess, for home theatre systems these days. It will do video and audio, making it a one-stop shop. It will do 1080 signal and high. It will even do ultra high definition in the newer cables, that's 4K. It does audio return, so it will take an audio signal from your TV and send it back to your receiver so that you can display or listen to your TV through your surround sound system. It'll even carry an ethernet signal, that is a data signal, but there are very few devices on the market that actually do that, something that you'll almost never come across. Now, the main issue that people have with HDMI is actually distance. Up to about five meters, these work brilliantly. And in most home theater system setups, that is quite okay. But if you've got a more complicated setup with multiple zones over greater distances, the distance of a HDMI signal is can be a problem. There are ways around it, but it is something to be aware of. So there you have it. The six main cables that you will come across with home theater systems, starting with analog, using composite. That's the little yellow one right there. Moving on to S-Video, look, if you find one of those, go and buy a lottery ticket because they are exceptionally rare. Then we move along to Component, which is still used quite a lot. Each channel is sent down its own cable, R, G, and B. Then we go to the digital signals, which is firstly a VGA cable. Um, monitors actually still, or TV screens, I should say, still actually have these as a bit of a legacy format. We then move to DVI, which will do 3D as well as 1080 signal. And lastly, the one that everybody knows and is the most common cable these days, the HDMI cable, which will send audio and video, making it a convenient one-stop shop. So there you go. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below, or alternatively, you can get in touch with us at ascent.com.au.